Bill? Cuckoos? Uh, cuckoos. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> oh, great. Science! Thank you all. It's so good to see you. Uh, unlike, uh, I believe, all of my colleagues, I am an engineer. I mean, <laughs> let me emphasize, um, like my colleagues, I'm a human, uh, but uh, engineer. And may maybe some of you saw that right away. Uh, people recognize you at parties. Hey, you're an engineer. Uh, your pants don't reach the floor, that's how <laughs> you can tell. Hey, listen, man, can you fix the blender? <laughs> I mean, you're the engine. Yeah, yeah, I can fix the blender. Here's what you do. Uh, hold the plug in the wall firmly. <laughs> and then uh, just hold the blender motor under some cold running water. <laughs> uh, see, that's funny if you're scientifically literate. <laughs> So my older brother, tremendous influence on me, had a wonderful physics teacher, Woodrow Wilson High School, Washington, D.C. And he told my brother the story who told me the story. Michael Faraday, in uh, 1828, then uh, through 1831, would do the Christmas lectures at, uh, in London, which is back east someplace. And <laughs> he did this demonstration where he had a coil of wire on one end of a laboratory bench connected to another coil of wire by two wires, the, the terminal wires of the coils. So he goes down here with a bar magnet, reasonably powerful magnet, which you could find in those days, and moves it, if I may, in and out of the coil uh, <laughs> with respect to the coil. <laughs> and then... Here's the thing, you know, I was in college, okay? <laughs> and I, I don't want to trouble you, I know there are a lot of grown-ups here and stuff, but you, that never goes away. <laughs> that, it's always, it's still funny. <laughs> the X, 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 Y, X, X, it's still there. So he moves the magnet at this end of the table, and the compass needle moves at this end as if by magic. Uh, but of course, it wasn't magic, it was... Science! Science! Yes. <laughs> so the story was embellished, and it was presented to me that he did this demonstration with such success so often that he presented it to the Queen of England. And the Queen of England is supposed to have said to him, Mr. Faraday, of what use is it? And here's where I just admire the guy, and I admire what we in the United States perceive as the British uh, way of thinking. He did not say, lady! <laughs> what? Are you, what? Are you, would you look? That's at that end, I'm at this, I'm not touching it. <laughs> what? Are you high? I mean, come on. <laughs> I love it. You guys are awesome. But, but that's not what he said. <laughs> According to the story, he said, Madam, of what use is a newborn babe? Now, I don't know how much time you have spent uh, with newborn babes, but they're not that useful. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're loud, <laughs> and they leak, and there's... A lot of times they don't seem to understand a word you say to them. But with that said, everybody, first of all, I mean, look at, with all due respect, uh, it was King George IV at first, and then it was William IV, so there was no queen involved. Uh, and it, when I did the Science Guy show, we had a, a researcher who was very diligent about this, and it was, he never presented it to the monarch, he presented it to some woman, a, a normal person, came up to him and asked him this question. But look around, everybody, everything in this room, everything, the lights, the curtains, the paint, the clothes you're wearing, the upholstery, the floor, the stage, everything here owes its existence 
to that discovery, to the discovery that not only is there a connection between electricity and magnetism, but there's a connection between electricity and the moving of the magnetism, the flux. And that discovery, dare I say it, changed the world. <laughs> but this is, this process of science that this guy spent, I guess, he, he took tremendous pride in his demonstrations and he really perfected this to show it to people. This discovery uh, had a deep effect on me. Now, when I was uh, a kid, I delivered the newspaper. I was a paper boy. They were, uh, that was the title. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in the Washington Post on Sundays, there'd be Ripley's Believe It or Not. It was still there. Uh, it was a different paper, but still there. And it would say from time to time, they would run the story roughly, according to aerodynamic th theory, Bumblebees cannot fly. <laughs> and this made quite an impression on me. And I spent some time watching bumblebees. <laughs> and it became clear to me that the bees are fine. <laughs> the, the problem is with the theory. So I wonder, continually, I wonder how many things are right under our nose that we just don't know anything about. I had a uh, Sky Streak airplane, which are still manufactured, and uh, the older boys showed me how to lubricate the rubber motor with dishwashing soap, and I wound that thing up, man. I wound up that rubber band and I got that thing wound up 300, 350 turns, man. And I read on the back of the package that you can steer the aircraft by bending the, hor the vertical tail, the, the rudder, making a rudder, sort of. <sighs> Bend. <sighs> now, okay, this is an eyewitness account, and it's from one guy. You, you, eyewitness accounts are imperfect, and this is the way I remember it, okay? <laughs> now, most of the time when you operate these aircraft, if you've ever tried it, it's two hands, you throw it <laughs> like that. Or you throw it like that. But one time I threw it, and it made three perfect circles. And it came right back to my hand, like, like a boomerang with Bugs Bunny or something. And then I realized that I could influence objects. I realized that if you could understand things enough, you could make things and shape things and imagine traveling around the world. And you could do it with a balsa wood airplane. Just think what you could do if you worked for a big company, like Boeing. And that's what I ended up doing. Uh, I worked on 747s. Uh, I, I, relax, everybody. I was very well supervised. <laughs> but these things that happen to you when you're a little kid influence you so much, and I'll bet you everybody in here is a science enthusiast, got excited about it before you were 10 years old. And this passion, this, this drive to know our place in the universe is what makes us special. It's what makes our species worthy. And with this PB&J, this passion, beauty, and joy, <laughs> we can, dare I say it, change the world! Thank you. The engineers, you people. Thank you. Yeah, that's it's very water. good. You know, now that I've tried this, I don't think I could live without it. <laughs> Neil, uh, you want to talk about our world or another one? So, this one. Okay.